everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar. Today we are going to be going over Section 179, which is Tax Credit for Your Business. My name is Vicki. I am the in-house trainer uh, for your IT company. I've been spending the last couple of years developing training programs uh, both internally and externally for new hires, new clients, on software, hardware, and everything in between. Lately, I have started doing webinars as part of this as well, which has been a very fun addition to the training modules that I have developed. One thing that I am not, however, is a tax professional. Make sure that any information that you find useful here today, you do discuss with your trusted tax professional before making big changes. Now, you're probably wondering, if I'm not a tax professional, why am I giving a presentation on Section 179? Got a couple of good answers for that question. The biggest one, which I don't have on the slide because it's more of an opinion than a straight fact, we are invested in your business. As your IT company, we care about the well-being and success of your company. And since we have a little bit of insight on Section 179, and because a lot of tech items are eligible, we wanted to make sure that this is some information that we pass along to you. So that's why I'm going to give the disclaimer probably about five more times. I'm not a tax professional, but we do have a little bit of knowledge here that as someone who is invested in your business, we want to make sure that you have, that you understand, and that you can take full advantage of this. Section 179 was created to benefit small and medium-sized businesses. It's designed to be very easy to understand. The forms are not particularly complicated. The requirements are not particularly complicated. And the documentation that you need to submit to get the tax credit is probably documentation that you're already keeping anyway. Most business owners know sort of uh, from basic general knowledge of running a business that certain items are tax deductible. Section 179 is a little bit different because it is designed specifically to benefit small and medium-sized businesses. If you're running a Fortune 500 company or somebody that's making multi-million dollars every year, this tax write-off or this tax uh, deduction is not going to be as big a benefit as it is for someone who is you know, running a smaller enterprise. It's also designed to stimulate the economy by taking uh, the total of your taxable income, bring that down, which of course then leaves more money for you after the tax season, which then you can turn around and put back into the economy by making more purchases to benefit your business, which then trickles down because that benefits those employees, so on and so forth. It's also meant to encourage growth in those small businesses by encouraging you to make those purchases to benefit your business, better serve your clientele, and then grow your business. Uh, since many tech items are eligible, we want to make sure that you have this information and you are able to use it to its fullest advantage. Well, that's kind of why we're here today, why we're doing this. Uh, I know it kind of might seem like a little strange getting tax information from your IT company, but we're doing it uh, for good reason. Want to make sure that you have all of the best tools to succeed in your business, not just the IT stuff. All right, so how does it work? How does what Section 179 work? So first of all, you are going to want to keep track of your purchases of business-related equipment. Of course, you're probably doing that anyway, simply because it's good to have those records for anything that you are purchasing. You want to make sure that you keep track of where you made the purchase, so did you get it from a wholesale vendor? Did you purchase something through a company such as ours? Uh, did you order it online? What is the source of the purchase? How it was acquired? Are, did you buy it outright? Did you finance it? Is it a leased item? All three are eligible for this deduction. And you want to make sure you are documenting when it was placed in service. Probably going to touch on this a couple more times, but it is very, very imperative that you understand that simply owning the equipment does not mean that you qualify for the deduction. The item must be placed into service, so you must be using it in the course of your business in the same calendar year as it was purchased to be eligible for the deduction. So if you buy a printer, and it's a nice high quality printer, uh, it's got the whole scanner built in, it maybe is even connected to your network, great. If you have it in your building but it's not set up and you're not actually using it, it's not eligible for the deduction. 
So if you have some equipment and you need it set up, make sure that you are letting your IT company know so that we can come and help you uh, get that going. Want to make sure that you are able to, one, use it as soon as possible, and two, able to claim it under this deduction for this year. Next step, there is a form that is available on the IRS website. It is called Form 4562 and attach it to your 2017 tax return. Of course, if you download it and you take a look at it and it is way over your head, take it to your tax professional. They are going to be uh, familiar with it and they will be more than happy to walk you through. The deductions uh, up to $510,000 for 2017 reduce your taxable income by the total amount claimed. You can deduct 100% of the cost of any eligible equipment as long as, as I mentioned, it was purchased between January 1st and December 31st, 2017, and it was placed into service between January 1st and December 31st, 2017. So if you spend $5,000 on computer equipment, you can deduct $5,000 from your taxable income. Taxable income cannot be reduced below zero, so if you have uh, a gross income less than $510,000, uh, you're not going to get money back from the government by claiming some of these deductions. Um, there is a different way that you can claim those deductions. Traditional depreciation write-offs may apply. If your business is operating at a loss for the year, talk to your tax pro. It's a different beast. Not quite the same thing as Section 179. This is for businesses that are operating in the black, you are turning a uh, profit, and you have purchased some of this eligible equipment for the year. So now if your profit is only uh, $200,000 and you've purchased $500,000 worth of equipment, the max that you're going to be able to claim is the, you know, the 2000 or 200,000. So unfortunately you're not going to get money back from the government, but uh, it still is beneficial to reduce that total taxable income so that you can have that credit and uh, benefit from that. Uh, purchase amounts over $510,000 up to 2,030,000 are eligible for reduced deductions. So if you have a uh, higher taxable income and you have made purchases over $510,000, uh, you can still claim reduced deductions. It is on a dollar by dollar basis that the reductions happen. Again, talk to your tax professional. It's a little bit more complicated, but you can still uh, reap that benefit to some degree. All right, so what equipment is eligible? new equipment that is purchased or leased for business use. So it can't be used equipment, it has to be new, and it can be purchased or leased. You can purchase it outright, paid in full, or it can be financed. Uh, tangible personal property used in business. So if you have, say for instance, office supplies, uh, you know, maybe you bought nice staplers and there's enough people in the office that you wanted to include that in the deduction, that sort of thing would apply as well. It counts as equipment used in business. Uh, business vehicles with a gross vehicle weight of over 6,000 pounds. I am going to go into vehicles a little bit more in depth after we go through this list. There are some caveats and some uh, exceptions there. We'll touch on that. This is the big one where it comes, where we come in. Computers, printers, scanners, copiers, servers, switches, routers, wireless access points, etc. All of these pieces of equipment that we uh, use in our business day-to-day -day lives, the things that keep our businesses going, the things that let us communicate with one another, all of these items are eligible for deduction. This also does include software that is off the shelf. <clears throat> meaning that this is software that is available to the public, not written specifically for your business. So if you have purchased Office 365, that is considered off-the-shelf software. It is something that you can download from the Microsoft website. I can download. Anybody has access to, and it's all the same. If you have software that is specifically written for your business, say you are a retailer and you have a point-of-sale system that is specifically written for your company and nobody else uses it, that unfortunately is not eligible for the write-off. It has to be something that is readily available to everyone. 
if you have software that has some minor modifications to it, say a, a watermark or uh, you know your logo included somewhere, it may or may not be eligible. That would be a question for your tax professional. Uh, comes down to percentages and basic use sort of thing. So they'll be able to advise you more clearly on that. But for the most part, especially going to say again, Office 365 is a great one because that's one of the most popular pieces of software. It's one of the uh, software suites that we service the most and we uh, offer. So we want to make sure that you know that that is one specifically that can be eligible for this deduction. Same thing with any computers purchased. Uh, anything that has been set up in your business as far as networking equipment, all of those items count. The other thing is that since this is something that is required to be used by December 31st, if you are thinking about making any of these purchases, if you've got a bunch of computers in the office that are kind of limping along, if you have employees that might function better if there was wireless access throughout your office or throughout your place of business, contact us. Let us know. We've got about a month left in the year. We can make some purchases for you. We can get some of this equipment installed for you. Make sure that it is in your building, paid for, and working by December 31st so that you can take advantage of the tax credit for this year. Remember, it will adjust your uh, total taxable income so if you've got taxable income that you would like to kick back less of that in taxes, let us know. We can help you out. We'll get some upgrades going and make sure that you can take full advantage of this, especially if it's something that you know you're going to do soon anyway. Now is the time to act. Same thing for office furniture and equipment. This does include items like desks, refrigerators, office chairs, those kinds of things that are going to be in every office, but you may not necessarily think of them as tax deductions. It definitely counts. So if you, uh, you know, if your break room refrigerator is kind of on its last legs and you think maybe it's a good time to upgrade that, same thing. Make sure you get it done by the end of the year. That way you can take advantage of the tax deduction for 2017. Also counts uh, property attached to the building that is non-structural. So if you are, say, a printing press company or a printing company, you would have the ability to take advantage of the credit on the uh, printing equipment. This is typically for equipment that is a bit heavier, uh, tends to require anchoring to the existing structure. Uh, same thing if maybe you, know, you are a, uh, a bakery or some sort of confectionery company where you have large equipment that is installed directly into the building. Those sorts of things are considered attached to the building, but non-structural. So those are eligible for this deduction. You can also deduct partial business use items. So if you have, for instance, a laptop that you take to the office and you use it during your workday, but then you take it home and you use it for personal use as well, you may still be able to deduct a portion of the cost of the laptop if it was purchased in 2017. The deduction is based on the amount of time the item is used for business purposes and the minimum is 50%. So if you only use it for business a couple hours a week, it's not quite going to be eligible. But if you use it about 50-50, uh, half the time or more it is being used for business use, that is something that you can uh, claim under this deduction. So it doesn't even necessarily have to be things that stay in the office as long as it is used for business use at least half of the time it counts. Right? So what doesn't count? Real estate. So if you are leasing your building, your office building, uh, or purchased, uh, land and buildings do not count under this deduction. Gifts. If someone has gifted you a laptop, uh, or if you uh, received it, say, as a prize. Let's say you won a laptop in a giveaway, you're using it for business. Well, unfortunately, you didn't purchase it, so it does not count as part of this deduction. Same thing with inheritance. If you've received anything through an inheritance, again, you didn't purchase it, so it's not eligible for this deduction. Um, equipment acquired from a business partner or family. If you, I'm going to keep using the laptop uh, example because it's nice and simple. If your business partner had a laptop that was just sitting at home and they donated it to the company, you cannot then call that a purchase because you didn't spend money on it. It was given to you. Uh, or even if you do 
purchase it from a business partner or family, it still has to come from an actual retailer uh, because you didn't pay tax on it, so therefore it's not qualifying for this tax deduction. Leased out property does not count. So if you have something that you are renting out, let's say that you have a tool uh, or hardware company and you rent out, uh, say, vacuums or steamers, things like that, those items are not eligible to receive the deduction because you are receiving money back for that anyway. Uh, same thing with used equipment. Used equipment is not eligible for the deduction. Items must be purchased new. Not new to you, but actually new. Going into vehicles. Vehicles are the one caveat. Uh, used vehicles do count for this deduction. So anything else has to be brand new except for vehicles. Like I said, vehicles are kind of their own little category. Want to make sure that we go over some of the details here. So the big difference between vehicles that are covered or are eligible 100% and vehicles that are not, the difference is there are passenger vehicles and non-passenger vehicles. So a passenger vehicle is obviously going to be like your car, your van, your SUV, something that you are personally driving, that other people may be a passenger in, but it is not used in the course of uh, doing business. You are just transporting yourself and other people. Uh, these are vehicles with a gross vehicle weight of less than 6,000 pounds. Now, passenger vehicles may still be qualified or may still be eligible for a partial deduction. So, passenger vehicles that are used for business 50% of the time or greater carry a maximum deduction of $11,060 for cars and $11,160 for trucks or vans. So if you have a company car, or if you've purchased a company car, you can deduct up to that $11,000. Not the full uh, price of the car unless you paid less than that. Talk to your, talk to your tax professional uh, because the portion of time that it is being used for business comes into play again. Exceptions include vehicles that are specially designed or, or modified for transport of non-passengers or passengers for hire, such as vehicles with an enclosed driver's compartment. That would be something like a delivery van, a taxi service, not Uber or Lyft. Those are still personal vehicles. The uh, driver compartment is not closed off. So if you think of a traditional taxi, there's usually a uh, partition between the driver and the passenger that makes it qualify as uh, full business use, which is the full deduction. Other things that uh, are an exception are if you have installed permanent shelving, say that you have a work truck or a work van and it has the, the back uh, cargo area is enclosed, you've installed the storage, shelving, uh, straps, tie downs, that sort of thing, that makes it obviously a non-personal use vehicle. Also eligible non-personal use vehicles painted with the company name. Uh, so especially if you have one of those work vans that uh, carries your equipment around, you have the company name on it, that qualifies it as a non-personal use vehicle. Now, probably wondering if I stick a vinyl decal on my personal car and drive it around, does it count? Talk to your tax professional. It's going to come back to you Again, that portion of time that it's used for business and a couple of other qualifiers. So when you start to get into those gray areas, that's where you're definitely going to want to talk with your trusted tax professional to find out exactly which side of the line that falls on. Now, heavy SUVs or crossover vehicles with a gross vehicle weight of 6,000 pounds or greater may be eligible for deductions up to $25,000 if they meet extended criteria. When this program was first launched back in, I believe, 2007, a lot of businesses went out and bought huge SUVs just for the tax write-off. Kind of got the reputation of being the, the Hummer loophole, uh, the, um, the personal use uh, Humvees, the you know, Hover 2, the H2, H3, were particularly widely advertised as being exploited uh, with this particular loophole. So. To close that loophole, they have reduced the eligibility for those heavy SUVs or crossover passenger vehicles, but acknowledging that they are still sometimes used for legitimate business purposes, that's why there are some extended criteria items uh, related to those types of vehicles. So again, 
talk to your tax pro. There's some more information there. There's more money potentially on the table if you've purchased one of those within this calendar year. Now, items that are, or vehicles that are 100% eligible for this tax deduction are heavy non-SUV vehicles with a cargo area greater than six feet in length that is not easily accessible from the driver's compartment. So that's going to be your work trucks, uh, cargo van, anything along those lines. Uh, vehicles with an enclosed driver's compartment and no seating behind the driver. Again, describing work vans or work, work trucks. Or vehicles that seat more than nine passengers. So for instance, if you do transport for say a nursing home or a church or a private school, anything along those lines, those do count for the full deduction. So you can see there's a lot of nuance here when it comes to vehicles. Want to make sure that uh, we do encourage you to seek out these deductions, but talk with your tax pro when it comes down to the nitty gritty and the details. All right, what else do you need to know? All right, going to emphasize again, I know I said it before, but items must be purchased or leased in the calendar year in which you are claiming the deduction and it must be placed into service in the same calendar year. So please do make sure that if you have any big purchases coming up, maybe consider doing it now and make sure that anything that you do purchase this year is placed into service before December 31st. Don't buy a bunch of new computers and then think, oh, I'll wait till after the holidays to start getting them up and running. That is doing yourself a disservice. If you need help, let us know. That is what we are here for. Uh, items that are partial use must be used for business greater than 50% of the time, as I mentioned before, and deductions should be based on the percentage of the time used for business purposes. Go back to a laptop. Let's say you have a laptop that costs $1,000. If you have it at work, 50% of the time, and you use it at home 50% of the time, you can deduct 50% of the cost of the laptop under Section 179. So you would be able to deduct $500 of the $1,000 purchase price. Where this gets a little tricky is if the amount of time the item is used for business changes, the deduction must be updated. So if you are using it in the office 100% of the time now, and later on you start taking it home and using it for personal use, you are going to need to let your tax pro know so they can make some adjustments on that deduction. Kind of on the honor system, but nobody wants to be audited. It's not a good time for anybody, so just make sure that you are keeping good records and being truthful with you know, these items where you kind of are on the honor system a bit. Uh, additional deductions may be available for those in empowerment zones. What is an empowerment zone? If you're in one, you probably know about it. If you are not in one, it's not relevant. So if you know for sure that you are in an empowerment zone, talk with your tax pro because there are tax deductions in addition to Section 179 that are available to you. So you may get even more of a tax credit based on those extra deductions. So in summary, if you are a small to medium sized business owner, please, please, please don't forget to give yourself a leg up this year using the Section 179 tax credit. If you have purchased equipment this year that is eligible for this deduction, and remember it counts for most of what is in your office or your place of business uh, that it, that are items that you are using in the course of your day-to-day -day business life. Make sure those items are in service before December 31st. Don't leave printers, copiers, switches laying around. If you have uh, wireless networks that you have purchased the equipment for but it's not set up yet, uh, security cameras that aren't set up yet, talk to us. We want to make sure that you aren't putting that off until next year and then you will not have the ability to claim these deductions. Um, it has to be in service before the end of the year. So we can make that happen for you. Like I said, we've got about a month. Uh, don't think that it's too late. It's definitely not too late. We are more than happy to help you out. And one last time for addi additional information and before you take action, consult with your tax professional. They are the ones who live and die, eat and breathe tax code, and they are going to probably have even more information on this than I have for you today, and they'll be able to help you with those gray areas where it's not completely crystal clear 
whether you fall on one side of the line or the other. They will make sure that you have all the correct documentation and that everything is clear and accurate before your uh, taxes are submitted for the year. That is everything. Thank you very, very much for watching. I appreciate your time today, and I wish you all the uh, best for the rest of 2017.